David. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. <clears throat> um, just kind of uh, update on your on your health, your shoulder, and everything. Are you are you put all back together and, and ready for the, the 2020 season? Yeah, I'm all good. Uh, it was a little rough off season, but we got everything back to uh, back to the old way. At what point did you feel like you were all pieced back together and ready to go? Um, about a month ago, you know, my body started started to feel real good, uh, better better than it was last year, and I just feel like I'm ready to uh, take over the season. So, in a way, I mean, is this delay has this delay helped you a little bit from a health standpoint? Yeah, it did help me a lot. You know, it was some things that we had to to get better, and then with the delay and our season getting pushed back, it helped me tremendously. Uh, just with Rondell coming back, um, I mean, kind of your emotions when he said he was leaving and then when he was coming back, kind of walk us through kind of where your mind was at and just how excited are you to have him back now and have him as a running mate? Uh, when the first one he told me he was leaving, you know, I was happy for him because I knew he was going to chase his dreams and to become an NFL player. You know, that's what he always talks about. And if you play in the college level, that's basically everyone's dream is to play in the NFL. And then uh, <clears throat> when he announced he was coming back, you know, I was also happy because I realized that I can finally get to play with Rondo. What, I mean, what what can you guys achieve together? I mean, what, what kind of, uh, you, know, you know, what can you guys do on the field at the same time, and how does that open things up for the rest of the offense? I really believe the sky is limited for us, too, and also the offense, too. Because I just think that uh, Coach Brown is a tremendous play caller, and I think he can – not only get me and Rondell the ball, but get get others involved too. What what other area of the offense should benefit from you two being on the field? Um, I say everybody, you know, it takes some pressure off the offensive linemen because they can't really blitz because they have to worry about me and Rondell and also the other playmakers that we have. And also it takes some pressure off the running back because it's open up the gas for them. And just can you uh, evaluate kind of what you're seeing out of the quarterbacks and um, – you know, kind of, you know, how, how are they, are they, are they different or are you seeing a lot of similarities between those guys? Yeah, you know, some of them, a lot of them are very similar, but they all have a very unique differences. But I think all of them are, could be the number one quarterback, you know, they're still having a quarterback competition. So uh, we still don't know. Thank you. No problem. Okay, let's go with uh, Tom. Yeah, David. Uh... How do you how, how do you build off last year's eighty six catch season? That had to be something beyond your your wildest imaginations, I would think. Uh yeah, you know, I really didn't expect to put up the type of numbers that I did last year. You know, I figured that Rondell would play the whole season and my numbers would be limited. But with the season that I had, I think it's only uh, good for me if I just play off that. You know, hopefully I can get more catches and touchdowns and yards to help better our team and help us uh, continue to win. Hey, talk real quick about the four true freshmen. Uh, maybe your impressions of Marcellus Moore and Colin Sullivan and Malik Carr and Abdul Rahman Yassin. All those guys are good. I mean, they're catching onto the playbook fairly well. You know, I just think that the more they get in the playbook, the faster they can play. Uh, the faster you can play, the better plays you can make. You know, all those guys will make the play out there in practice. So hopefully all those guys will get the opportunity to play for us this year. Okay, good. Thank you, David. Hi, right, Dakota. Hey David, um, kind of to bounce off what uh, what Mike asked you there just recently, you only got a, a, a brief period to play with with Rondell. What is that going to be like to kind of adjust to uh, another guy being there that is used to being the number one receiver? Obviously, you kind of took over that role after he went out with an injury. What has that been like in practice, um, at, at least to this point? It's been pretty fun actually because you get to play with the future first rounder and. Uh, future NFL superstar. So, I mean, I learned a lot from him, you know, watching him practice is just, just take little nuggets from him and put them into my game so I can get prepared to What's practice been like for you, just adjusting over the summer and obviously not being able to be in the facility and things like that to kind of, you know, you get a month of advance notice here before your season starts. What has it been like for you just getting, making sure you're in shape and making sure you're game ready? Uh, I think the physical aspect, you know, you got to go out, run, do push-ups, sit up, just do what you can so you don't get out of shape or do anything like that. And then just more for me, I try to focus on film just uh, 
to better my understanding of the game that I did last year. And you, obviously, you got experience playing with both uh, Jack and Aiden, but what have you seen out of uh, Austin Burton and his development picking up the playbook? He's a very quick learner. You know, he's an athletic quarterback, uh, which is kind of something new, new that we have. But, you know, he's a smart quarterback. He has a strong arm. And like I said, uh, I really don't know who's going to be the starter, but you know, they all have a good chance to play. Cool. Thanks, David. No problem. Uh, Dre, what you got? Hey, David, what are your general expectations for this season? Uh, I just want to compete to the highest level I can. Uh, I don't really have any set goals right now. But I think I'll come up with those shortly. But I just want to play better than I did last year. And then where were you when you kind of got the news that you guys were going to get to play, and how did that feel for you? Um, I was actually at home watching TV, and then you know, my mom texted me. Uh, a couple of the athletic trainers texted me, too. And when I heard the news we were going to get to play, you know, I was very excited because you see the other teams play, and you kind of think that it's unfair that other universities get to play, but you don't get to play. But I'm happy that the big team came up with a final decision to allow us to play. Thank you, David. Um, Anyone else? Yeah, I got one more. Uh, All right, David, thank you. Can I have one more? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, just, I mean, the fact that you guys are tested now every day, does that put you at ease? Maybe put your teammates at ease about, you know, playing in a, in, a, in the middle of a pandemic? Uh, yeah, it does. But then again, at the end of the day, you have to be very cautious of what you do. Like, we have to wear a mask out in public, in you know, facilities. And I just think, you know, with the Big Ten testing us every day, it, it does give me a sigh of relief that I can be protected to play. But then, you know, out of society, you still have to take caution to yourself also. But you guys have you really have to be diligent outside the facility as far as, who you interact interact with and things like that. Yeah, that is true. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, David. All right, we'll be on with the mod uh, momentarily. Okay. Questions for Ahmad. We'll start with Karim. Hey, Ahmad. Um, give us a quick idea of maybe some of the areas that you think you've improved the most at since the last time we saw you play in 2019. Um, I definitely would say uh, my speed. Uh, I improved a lot on my speed and just my, my, my attention to detail and what the coaches is asking me. I was big on that and just, you know, listening to what they had to to instill, install, install in my my game this year to just help me make things a lot easier with what I already had. Hey, take us through your emotions when you first heard Rondell was opting out, and then you heard he was opting back in. I mean, Rondell, he's big to the program, man. He needs a lot. So when we lose somebody like that, it's, it's always like somewhere where we got to try and regroup and, and figure it out. But when he found when we found out we was coming back, you know, we was happy. We was like. We got our team, we got our full team. We'll be able to rock and roll. Let's get it. It's kind of how we all felt as a receiver core as a whole. And that's how we came out. How are they going to keep all you wide receivers happy, Ahmad? There's, there's one football. There's a lot of talent at your position. I mean, it's hard. But the, the best thing about this receiver core is we're, we're all brothers and we all we all love to see each other do good. So when, when somebody else scores a touchdown, it's like, the other three scored a touchdown, so it's like that. It don't matter who got the ball. We all gonna be happy. We all happy to be out there playing football again. So I don't think it's gonna be that much of a big deal, but it's gonna be a big deal though. We'll, it'll be all right. And what are your impressions of the four true freshman wide receivers? Um, they work hard. They work hard day in and day out. They they're learning, learning a lot of stuff, a lot of new techniques. They're taking coaching very well, 
and you know they they're giving everything they got every day. So that's kind of you know the whole the whole receiving core. We all accountable for those actions. Thank you, Ahmad. No problem. All right, Mike. Hey, Ahmad. Just kind of where where are you working at right now? Are you working just on the perimeter, or are you getting any time in the slot? Um, a little bit of both. Kind of some some slot work and some uh, some outside work. Various. Uh, during the from the spring through the summer, I mean, how did you stay sharp? How did you how did you go about keeping your physical skills as sharp as you could, especially not knowing when you guys would get back together as a team and start training again? Oh, uh, well, I knew it was going to be hard for a lot of us, but my biggest thing was just staying consistent, doing all the things that I could I could develop myself into into helping me when the season came. So from everything, just to to being consistent and and just making sure that I'm I'm staying in the best shape possible for whenever football came back. Did you pick up any new hobbies during the pandemic? Anything that you do? Um, I mean, I've, I've been doing this little freestyle rap thing, but as I promise, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. I've been doing like some some freestyle raps, you know, just having some fun, making myself laugh, and and you know, bonding with my family and stuff like that. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Staying focused and you know just having fun. Uh, what things uh, you think you can build on what you did last year and kind of make, get yourself some, some some momentum early in the season? Um, definitely just just paying attention to the attention to detail and and working on what the little things that that we harp on in the receiver room. All those 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 little details that help me be ready for for game day and 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 I could rep those things out during practice so I could be great at it. Just um, you know, with the quarterbacks, um, heard that you know Jack stepping up, being a little bit more vocal. You know, Aiden, Aiden has a, a different level of confidence maybe coming off what he did last year, and then you know Austin brings yeah. it on the front. Just kind of evaluate what you've seen out of those quarterbacks both on and off the field, and how big of an asset can they be for you? I mean, our quarterbacks, they do a tremendous job, job of being leaders for this team on and off the field. And Aiden, Jack, and um, Austin, they do a perfect job of, you know, just, just putting guys in the right positions to make plays for them and themselves. So they just do a great job of communicating and letting us know what they want to be done so we can make this 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 offense a lot more dynamic. Okay, we got about uh, four minutes left with Ahmad, uh, Dakota. Hey, Ahmad, yeah. Kind of, kind of talk about just your summer. Were you able to go back to Staten Island? What did you, what did you do? How did you stay busy to to try to uh, keep yourself in the best physical shape as possible? Um, I was, I was, I was home for for a little bit during quarantine. It was tough, but I found a way to you know catch some balls and get some workouts in with like a couple of people that was that was home and stuff like that. But for the most part, it was hard. But I made it. I made a way and. I was able to, you know, work work on what I needed to work on for my toolbox and the, and help me progress for the season. There's several guys from that area. I know Tyrese from uh, Brooklyn. Yeah, uh, Michael Lamos from Jersey. Talk about. Do you have a bond kind of with them being from the the greater New York City area? Oh yeah, that ain't gonna stop. That ain't gonna stop. I love it. I love seeing all my my my, my peoples from you know the East Side and New York and every Jersey coming up here. You know, it's I love it. It's it's a great it's a great thing. I'm trying to let's go. Let's get it. I love it. We need more up here. Let's get it. We need more. We need obviously more. obviously uh, you seem like a juice guy. Is that kind of something you want to bring to that? Uh, yeah, I have to. I have to. I feel like it's, it's on myself every day to, you know, have the same energy. It's, it's it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the same me if I came in quiet. Guys are not used to that, so they kind of look for me to, you know, come in with that type of energy and just, so I'm saying, and just have that energy. Appreciate it, Ahmad. We you. got Coach Shepard here, so we're gonna let Ahmad go and, and get Shepard in. Thank you. Y'all gonna put this on video online or something? Or just, you know, make sure. Hey, bro, I see all my gray hair on my face. Coach Callaway. What's up, bro? What's up? All right, let's go with Coach Shepard. Let's start.
with uh, Mike Carmen. How y'all fellas doing today? I hope y'all doing good, man. I need to unmute myself. Uh, <laughs> how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Doing great. Uh, another opportunity to be out there practicing. Uh, didn't know for certain that that's, this day would actually uh, occur. At one point, I thought, uh, you know, we were going to be just <laughs> out here lifting weights all day, and, and that's it. And getting a chance to go out there and create and uh, develop and uh, help these young men achieve their goals. So, I mean, I, I'm doing great. I'm glad we are where we are. With uh, Rondell back now, this group, what's the what's the level this group can can achieve this year? I, you know what? Uh, on an individual basis, I think these guys uh, have to make sure that they are getting the most out of what they're capable of doing. You know, uh, the, the best part about it is Rondell does bring out the best in them. So as they're recognizing, you know, how he – how he participates in things, how he runs his routes, how he releases, you know, uh, they're, they're learning as they're watching it. And then when we get in the film room and, you know, I'm obviously able to coach him up in the room and they hear how he takes coaching and so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's, it's truly a blessing just to have him there. But I think the, you know, the sky's the limit uh, with number four and, and, and the rest of those guys. We got, we got, a, we got a lot of guys out there. And these guys got to go out there and perform. David Bell will be better this year because of why? Uh, he'll be better this year, uh, partly because number four is out there. Um, they don't get to put as, as many double teams on him because of number four being there. But, um, you know, he, he really actually understands and knows the offense and what we're trying to get out of the offense. Last year, to be quite honest about it, he just – was running routes. He didn't quite understand exactly what the nuances were for each route, uh, how it was affected by this coverage, um, if the defensive end, his click, or whatever they may be doing in the boundary at, uh, against him, how that affects him. Now, those things, he, 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 he's becoming a savant in terms of understanding the offense specifically and how he fits within it and what we're trying to accomplish, whether he's getting the ball or he's not getting the ball. He's the decoy on this particular route. He still has an understanding of running the route a certain way so that he can help someone else get open. So I think that because of his knowledge of our offense, he'll, he'll, have a, he'll be successful. All right. Uh, that's it for me for now. Thank you. All right, Tom. Coach Shepard, what's it going to be like? Diagram and plays with Moore and Bell on the field together. You didn't get a chance to do that much last year. <laughs> We've been having some fun with it already, actually. You know, um, just, uh, you know, the great part about um, this the, uh, working for Coach Braun, um, he, he, he doesn't put a cap on you. Uh, there's no ceiling with our offense. Um, it gives you the opportunity to be creative, um, and, and not just with those two, but with everyone. You know, you got other guys out there. Uh, such as Payne Durham, who's playing really well. Paul Ferry, even uh, after his move to tight end, he's playing really well. So now we got some guys out there who are, are being weapons and uh, becoming weapons out there for us, where it's not just about the designing something for just Rondell or, or David Bell. Now, obviously, you know, those guys are going to – I'm just a firm believer the ball finds you. I mean, if you're a player, the ball is going to find you. And, and with those guys – the ball will find them, and it, and it always has, and it, it will continue to. So Paul Paferi is a tight end now? <laughs> well, you know what? He's been taking some reps there, uh, and he's made some plays there when he's been in at that position. So I've uh, been liking, liking what I've seen from him so far. He's done a tremendous job. Uh, got great hands. He's fast. You know, I think he was a 10, 700-meter guy, so he did some really good stuff. So uh, it's been it's been good addition in my opinion, uh, with the rest of those tight ends uh, hey, uh, on the field. Hey, tell us, where, where were you at, and how did you find out Rondell was opting back in? So we were uh, we were actually here when they announced uh, that the Big Ten was uh, going to go ahead and, uh, and put in certain protocols to allow us to go ahead and restart our season. And uh, Rondell called me uh, probably minutes after it occurred, and um, – and, uh, and said that uh, he was actually working out at the time with his uh, trainer, Chris Vaughn. And um, he said to me, uh, so uh, 
what's our schedule look like? I said, I started laughing. I said, um, I mean, I know what our schedule looks like, but I don't know what your schedule looks like. He's like, well, well, my schedule about to be your schedule. So, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of cool that he immediately had that itch and desire to really want to come back and, and go ahead and showcase what he can do. Thank you, Jamarcus. All right, guys, uh, uh, Coach Shep actually has to go, so we're going we're gonna to wrap it there. Thank you all for, uh, for joining.